Assalamu alaikum guys, what is up? This is QQA. Welcome to another episode of Hot Drinks and Girl Talk. Today I am with Ferdowsi and you can see her username on the screen and we are going to be talking about an overdose of society rape. So I'm going to ask her a couple of questions and we're going to like share our opinions and you know responses to this um, things that are happening in the society. I'm sure by now everyone is familiar with um, the rampant rape that is going on all over Nigeria. So. Um, the first thing is, do you think rape has a cost? Yeah, personally, I actually believe um, it's complete, absolute complete lack of like morals and self-restraint. And to some extent, I actually come to believe that it's a form of sickness. Because anyone in their right mind would not just be okay like to act because it's a whole process i mean you have to actually oppress someone you have to pin them down against their will with all the struggles and all that yeah. to go ahead and like just take whatever you want from that person do you think it's it's because of the victim or because of the honestly rapist? when it comes to who is at fault it has nothing to do with the victim look the body is like is like a temple like it's it's someone's very like best possession like there is nothing you can possess in this world that will surpass your body like your body is there for you till the very end so for someone to feel entitled to feel like they have the right to come and steal that from you like that's insane that's absolutely crazy so basically if i get what Fredosi is trying to say she's trying to say that the cause of this thing is mainly the perpetrator yep. now you know um a lot of people um a lot of these rapists they tend to say um the victim is the cause of their madness because you have many of them when they go to court they say things like oh it's because of the way she dressed and you know um, she tempted me and oh everything God. what do you think because i know that this particular statement infuriates a lot of women it's like okay so i can't wear what i want to wear without like you know someone attacking me what do you think about that that's insane i mean a guy doesn't walk around with his um short knickers three cutters with like a vest or singlet or whatever that is and then women hunt him down and attack him because of what he's wearing so it doesn't make any sense nobody has the right to dictate to anyone what they are what they're supposed to wear like what they should look like like it's their body they can do whatever they want with it I mean it all comes down to um, parents I guess like okay us okay we know that oh we're supposed to be covering our body because Islamically like um, it's like part of our thing that it's a form of worship that we're supposed to do wear hijab and cover ourselves up and all that to yeah. prevent fitna and everything but then nonetheless i mean it's not everyone that practice islam and even the ones that practice like it doesn't mean that everyone like um goes by the covering of your body and whatnot but it still doesn't mean that someone will take away your right to dress however you feel like it's all up to you like it's all up to your own comfort your own preference like whatever you want to do i mean nobody can judge you nobody can tell you what to do it all comes down to what god wants to do at the end of the day but as humans like we all have our rights to do whatever we want i mean god gave us that free will yes but the same allah has put guidelines and rules yeah now and i feel like some of these things i'm not trying to like god forbid i'm not even about to defend a rapist or anything yeah. but like islamically we are supposed to cover up very much because allah knows what a lot of these people do you understand he knows what his creation is like capable of doing yeah so for that reason it's like okay um why would you why would you break a rule and expect to and be expect okay and expect to be okay do you get because okay i know some people would actually end up saying oh you know as um 
even Muslim women are victims of rape like, and everything. Yeah, I was because, coming to that. You know, actually. like uh, Muslim women, some of them will tell you that even when they wear their hijab, they have cases of, you know, some men tapping their butt and everything. Like, but don't you think that among two types of women, let's assume um, a woman that dresses decently, I mean, she covers up and everything, mm -hmm. and then another woman that doesn't cover up and like always goes with bomb shirts and all this, like. Um, sexually provocative dressing yeah. now if both of them were to be raped yeah. do you think that a rapist would actually tell the other woman that's the decently dressed woman do you think he'll go to court and say it's because of what she was wearing absolutely he has no he doesn't have that leverage like he doesn't now, have that you, excuse you understand that he can't use that his lawyer cannot use that as a defense um, option for yeah, him but with the other woman the lawyer can always use that as a defense option. even though it's not credible it's not credible, credible yeah like, it's not credible. but she that would even be an option for them so don't you think that option should be avoided like don't you think it's not about okay let me wear what i want to wear like it's my body it's my choice but you know that you're not the only one living in this world yeah. you might be dressing up being free and saying oh it's my body it's my choice and moving up and down but then the next person doesn't feel like it's your body and it's your choice the next person is thinking oh she's tempting me and he's being mad about it so it's more or less like if you're going to be on the right be on the right completely yeah. where he doesn't even have an excuse for whatever action. whatever action he takes like even if he takes an action you can easily say this person is sick because i gave him no reason he's never going to say oh she gave me a reason or oh, she tempted me or oh, what she was wearing because she wasn't even wearing anything provocative so what do you what do you have to say about people that dress provocatively and they know it's provocative because you have some women that go out with their cleavage open and then absolutely and, like, no, and then they're talking to a man and the man cannot keep his eyes on her face he's he's looking there yeah and then she's like my my face is up here do you understand okay <laughs> yeah now it's like you're you're doing something you're provoking something and then you expect you don't Not expect a, a result reaction, like, do you understand yeah. so w what do you have to say about that because right now we are this world we're sharing it we're sharing everybody's in the world yeah sick people are in the world normal people are in the world thieves are in the world rapists are in the world so if you're walking around it's just like a, a jungle yeah a zebra I, I, is passing you you don't go and pass where lions are and expect them not to eat you yeah. do you understand what i'm saying so you cannot say oh it's my rights it's a jungle it's a free jungle let me walk <laughs> yeah do you understand? let me walk in the jungle because it's free yeah because you are walking freely you're dressing as you want but you must understand that among men there are sane men and then there are insane men yep so what do you think okay so like obviously there is this saying that um whoever like okay if we don't follow what's in the quran if we don't follow the guidance and like the regulations that allah provided us with obviously you have to pay for it one way or the other and some of us happen to pay that since when we're here in the dunya before getting to the akhirah. like i said initially i said like there is no excuse for anybody to rape someone else like i have put it in my head that like the victim has no role in being harmed by a rapist the only reason why i said that is because as it is like you said there are there are like different kind of people in the world that we're sharing it okay i get that um apart okay like it's not just muslims that are in the world and apart from muslims like even christians like if they're actually following the teachings of the bible they are actually supposed to dress decently no religion no religion permits like women to dress provocatively and like act in a in an indecent manner or anything of any sort ladies we don't have the right to dress indecently provocatively and expect not to be treated in a certain manner Definitely. but it's still no excuse for, for anybody to take a, your body away from you yeah. that's yours and no one else's it's a problem that has a solution especially in just that one form because just because you dress decently doesn't mean that a psychotic rapist is still not going to take you as Honestly. his prey. So, like I said, at least you need to. If I'm going to give my advice on this particular issue, you need to even not give him an excuse to prey on you. 
Praise the right word, right? Mm -hmm. So you shouldn't give him an excuse to even. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Guys, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> Why do you think victims of rape don't speak out? Honestly, I believe there are so many factors to this. The first I'd like to address would be the um, like trauma. Like it's something like very traumatizing for you to get over the whole event that took place. Not even get over, like replay it in your head over and over again to come to a point where you accept it. Because most victims find themselves in denial. Like they are unwilling to accept that. Okay, this is. Do you know this is what what has happened here? Yeah? But to accept that I have been ripped off. How do I say? Like I, um, yeah. this has been taken away from me. So that denial that uh, people go through, like. Of accepting that okay this is what has actually happened there is the shame the shame of facing the world like looking at people in the eyes and telling them that okay this is what has happened to you like you're afraid some people are going to look down on you some will blame you tell you that it's your fault some would be asking what what were you wearing uh, um, are you do you have any relationship with this person yeah. like you know so many things mm -hmm. And then uh, um, apart from the shame, like there is fear, yeah. so much fear, like in, from so many angles. Yeah, because you find that some of these um, victims, once um, they've been raped, you'd find that they don't want to have anything to do with the opposite gender. Yeah. And they just tend to see everyone as a rapist, like any man that talks to them, automatically he wants to harm them so that fear is there and then i think there's also the you know there's this thing nigerians have where once you just come out to say you were raped people your name you lose your name absolutely yes your you lose your name you, your name has gone like when they want to refer to you ah no be that girl where they be raped rape. you understand God. no be like ah hey, you're not that girl where they rape but automatically Any, you, like do you, you understand your name it's like even you. possible it's even possible for you to go to the bank and just you know ask for something and then um people will be pointing at you, do you like, understand? About what do you think the society as well as the government should do in order to you know encourage rape victims to come out and say their story not so many people are actually out there making up these bodies to protect the victims of rape providing them with the platform for their voice to be heard and also like maybe some help mentally and psychologically like to overcome the whole maybe providing them with um, therapists like all these guidance and counselors people that they can talk to people that will help them regain their confidence and regain their selves back i also think that like um, once organizations like that are formed, like anti-rape organizations, and when I say anti-rape, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are only trying to prevent the rape from happening, but they should also be, you know, like a home for victims to be able to come and share their story as well as get some sort of comfort and you know these organizations i pray that anyone watching right now would want to form you know an organization or something that is very rigid in terms of rape victims as well as rapists whenever there's this rape victim that is about to be released or you know when justice isn't served organizations like this should be able to come out and like go on walks you know go for yeah, um, like to see to eat. Yes, like, they should be able to protest and rigidly protest and make sure that this person remains, you know, detained, detained. like accountable yes. for their actions. Yeah. How do you wish the public would react to rape victims speaking up? Like with so much empathy and love and kindness, because, like I said, like <laughs> the the biggest um, kind like type of theft that can happen to a person is when you take their body away from them. If you can actually put yourself in their shoes, like imagine yourself being in such kind of disaster, like it would really go a long way. If the predator is aware that, okay, this is the kind of response that the society has towards the people that go through this, and they know that, okay, one way or the other, they are going to be made to be accountable for their actions. Because if there is sympathy and empathy and like love and kindness towards um, the, the victims, obviously when you put yourself in their shoe you would probably feel like okay i have to get this person back this this person that did this to me like has to like has to pay for what he did 
which means that a lot of people would, would want to like make sure that these people um, get justice so yeah basically that would really go a long way what do you think should be the justice for a rapist left to me the justice for a rapist would be that or life imprisonment yes <laughs> you can you can quote me on that that or life imprisonment no i mean i don't even think there's anything better for them there shouldn't even be two years three years no because i feel life like imprisonment is a sick hmm. thing to do if a person can go ahead and do that to someone else like they have no kind of human um like how do, how do i say this human feeling whatever it is but like the human being in them is dead <laughs> yes definitely <laughs> and according to narrations during the prophet's time someone that raped was actually killed killed so why is actually i don't even think there should be any, be any sort of pity or anything for them nope kill finish them left to me it's never just imprisonment kill they should be killed left to me so lastly what measures should people take in order to avoid becoming victims of rape First of all, we, we've already addressed the dressing aspect mm -hmm. earlier on. Mm -hmm. Ladies, major learn key. to dress decently. Cover up yourself, protect your body. Self-defense. Yeah, get self-defense classes. Learn how to punch and kick. Yeah. Pepper spray mm -hmm. comes in very handy. <laughs> don't go anywhere without it. Yeah, don't seclude yourself with people that are just be less trusting yes Don't be too i trusting. think that trusting is where a lot of you know home babes when i say home babes i mean like um normal girls just i don't which one is home babes <laughs> you know i mean um i think when it comes to this trusting that's where you find that a lot of girls have situations where it's their friend a man that they took as a friend you a know family member, a family even. member uncle and all that that trust i feel like we shouldn't really just be trusting of anyone you know this trusting thing is where a lot of people have become victims from and you find cases where you know uncles are raping nieces you know fathers are even raping daughters yeah so <laughs> I'm, I'm not even trying to say don't trust your dad or anything but i mean at the end of the day it's all about you know just being prayerful like even if you have to trust people you should trust them one leg in one leg out because yep. the devil is as strong as the blood in our veins so people are not always in control of their actions and for that reason we should be prayerful and you know just limit how much we want to trust human beings in respect of, of their our relationship the position in your life yeah. yeah i must confess today's video has been very hectic yep. so i'm very sorry for all the noise in the background as a matter of fact i'm thinking of getting another location inshallah so and you guys thank you so much fido for it's a pleasure on um hot drinks and girl talk and as usual i like to give my guests yay yes guys so um i would see you in my next video inshallah until next time assalamu alaikum